What's up, Impactivists? Hey, guys. Here we are. We're taking Ooh. over Tom's channel today. And as you can see, there's no Tom on set. <laughs> no Tom. <laughs> Just the panel. <laughs> he's on vacation. He and Lisa are in Bora Bora. Bora Bora for their anniversary. They're pro How many um, baskets of fries is Tom through at this point? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because he only, he only splurges on vacation. But he says he doesn't splurge as much on That's vacations true. now. That's true. So All right, well, it welcome. might only be one basket. <laughs> All right. Well, we hope they're out there enjoying their vacation. We want to take this time to connect with you guys out there in TV land and show you a little bit about the team and who we are and give you a chance to ask us questions. Plus, we have some questions from Tom and Lisa that we're going to, we're going to answer as well. So we can get into this. But first, let's introduce our lovely panel here. Starting with? Starting with me. Hi, guys. Cindy here. Um, so as most of you know, I'm kind of the community liaison at Impact Theory. Um, my official title is Marketing Associate. That's right. Just catch all for all things. Yes. She does <laughs> a lot, a lot more than just community. She does. Yes. I also do everything. events. I everything. do a lot. Yeah. That's true. All right. Cool. Uh, and... Casey Elliott. Hello, I'm Casey. I'm associate producer for Impact Theory, the show. So that's just a lot of coordinating, show coordinating, yes. and then also clearance supervisor. I deal with a lot of legal, legal things that come up. And, yeah. you do and way other things. More than and your more stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. And really like, basically, without Casey getting all those legal things dotted, <laughs> we would not have a show. Yeah. <laughs> just oh, that record. plus. Business cards, business card, design, yeah. e-commerce, merchandise, like the list goes on and on. I like to call on. it Department of Casey, so. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so true. All right. What's up, everyone? I'm Chase. I am the marketing intern as my official title, but I'm also data analyst as well as de facto Photoshop guy, e-commerce <laughs> guy, yeah. and yeah. Uh, slacker guy, which kind of makes sense only if you're in the room, but... <laughs> Slacker guy. Yeah, he's well, the person. Slack, who, he's the person who helps me with the questions and stuff, like by slacking yeah. them to me. But slacker the guys, it comes off like, all kinds of wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like, we're we're running like, a new name because he that works really hard, guys. We promise. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. So Slack, the app that we use as a team communication tool, which if you don't know about and you're working on a team, highly recommend and suggest. We yeah. all like Slack. Oh, I love yeah. Slack works. I like stuff. And we don't even get paid by them for saying that. <laughs> no. Maybe now we will. Throw yeah. an affiliate in the comments. <laughs> so if you're out there watching on Facebook Live, give us a what's up. Make all these wonderful people feel warm and welcome and start asking questions. All the things you wanted to know about Impact Theory behind the scenes, but we're too afraid to ask. <laughs> I think now's what we'll time. do, I think what we'll do to start it off is actually share some questions that Tom and Lisa pre-recorded. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, let's see. Let's we'll see what we got. All right, what we got here? Oh, I muted it on accident. Uh-oh, we're oh, on mute. Uh, we're already running into problems. Oh, we're going to roll that back. <laughs> Put the volume on. Let's try that again. What is up, team? How are we doing? Hopefully, you guys are having a great time and are absolutely murdering this Q&A, which I you will be and we have some questions that we want to ask you guys so it should be fun yeah do you want to kick us off you can go for it. Uh, my first question do you consider yourself optimistic or pessimistic as a default setting oh okay. that's a good one that is a good one if anyone wants to take a swing or else I can go yeah, you're ready all right I'll go you seem ready I was yeah. like I'm, I'm ready. ready too <laughs> um I would say I'm cautiously optimistic <laughs> that's such that's a Jared the most Jared answer, answer I've ever heard. <laughs> Jared answer. <laughs> so here's why. Um, I do consider myself an optimist at heart, but I am also a skeptic in the sense that I employ skepticism to try to um, get to a place of belief in an okay. idea. It's not because I don't believe it's possible. It's because I want to actually know how it's going to work. And so I'll ask a lot of questions and be skeptical to try to get to that place of belief. But I do. I, I believe I'm an optimist at heart and Got it. A, a reformed idealist. So. Aww. <laughs> yeah. reformed idealist. Uh, I just consider myself an optimist. Uh, I don't really have any caveats that go with it. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know. I guess like I always believe that things are possible, and I always kind of 
sprinkle sunshine everywhere. So yeah, I just feel like that's me. You've always <laughs> been an optimist. Always been an optimist. Yeah. Yes. Born that way. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe an idealist occasionally yeah. sometimes, but right. mostly an optimist. I see it. I see it. <laughs> I think? also think I'm an optimist, but I feel what you said, like, rang really true for me. I feel like we're I, a yeah, yeah, we're both like, These two. let's look into everything. Yeah. They're my voice of reason. Dot all our I's, <laughs> cross all our T's. But I, I naturally think I'm positive and optimistic about things. Yes. Nice. Chase? Cool. I'm default setting. I'm a pessimist. So yeah, yeah. Ooh. Right. yeah. yeah. let's get into that. So I guess it all depends on like your perspective on how you're looking at certain situations. So if like my tire goes flat on the four or five freeway, it's just reaffirming that oh everything kind of sucks. So <laughs> <laughs> not not literally, but uh, and then there's times where something good happens, and I'm like okay maybe everything doesn't suck so bad. But uh, that's what I'm trying to learn to change. So I want to be an optimist and. I just realized that it's, it's a perspective change more than anything. So I can look at the optimistic side of things and say, look, this is how it always is and the bad things kind of happen sporadically. Or I can look at it as bad things always happen and the good things happen sporadically. Yeah. So it just depends your perspective on it, which I'm really trying to change. So Nice. Cool. All right. I like that. Let's see if uh, we don't have any questions yet. So Facebook Live, feel free to Hi, throw guys. out Jump your in. questions or shout outs. We want to see who's in the feed right now. Looks like yeah. I see Joshua Martell. Joshua! What's up? Thanks for giving me the tip on the mic. Can you guys hear me now? And, and tell us if you can't hear us throughout. Yeah. This is a whole new setup for us. Um, we got Jeff Caprio in the house. <laughs> That's my dad. Is that your dad? Jeff yeah. Caprio. Yeah, my dad. Like, he oh, wins Mr. for Pat. most, like, parents just, like, tuning in to stuff. Like, yeah, I can't even, I can't get my dad to, like, watch one of these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, his dad's in, his mom. Like, was your aunt here one time? <laughs> Probably. I mean, I haven't, haven't got my sister on yet, so we gotta wait for that All one right. next time. All right. So, welcome, Mr. Caprio, and thank you for lending us your very talented and wonderful son. Mm -hmm. He's a great asset to yes. the team. Okay. Let's go to another question from Tom and Lisa. Okay. <laughs> we already went. Oh. It's, it's, oh. Just give it a second. Come All right, guys, so now time for my question. What is one of the best experiences you've had here at Impact Theory and one of the worst experiences you've had here at Impact Theory? Oh, man. Uh, best and worst experiences. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. All right, well, That's you guys are thinking tough. of something. I'll <laughs> kick us off. I think my best and worst experience was the same experience, <laughs> and that was launch day. Launch night into launch oh, day. Oh, that's also a good one. I yeah. blocked that out of my memory. Yeah. <laughs> Cindy has PTSD <laughs> <laughs> on launch day. Um, if you've ever launched a company or rebranded a company, you know that the, the night before is just, there's so much to do. There's so many things, little details to go over. And then you also have to coordinate everything perfectly and stuff always goes wrong. That's yep. just the number one rule. It's there's things will break, things won't happen on time. And no matter how much you plan and work in advance, which we did a lot as a team uh, months in advance, there were things that didn't go right. So it's, it was exciting. It's super exciting on launch day to like, yeah, be working really hard. Did. Everyone's really pumped about like the unveil and um, and actually, you know, sharing our message with people. But um, it's also very stressful. So <laughs> it was a good and bad experience. And I think our launch went really well. A lot of things went really well, but some things broke. Like uh, what was it? The website didn't go up on time. And when it did go up, it, w it had all these errors and bugs that we had yeah. to fix. And people are starting to you know go to our website, check out our content. <laughs> interact with us and things aren't quite perfect you know it's like yeah. when you're trying to throw a party and you're still like trying to cook the food and clean up in the bathroom while people are showing up and you're just not quite ready oh, man. um so it's a little stressful <laughs> but um it was i love i love those this is like my, my second major launch at a company and you'll never forget those so that's my yeah. best and worst experience I thought you were going to say the logo was like one of the yeah. worst. Yeah. I, was like, I was thinking you were going to go straight logo. Yeah, that's true. Because <laughs> logo was pretty bad. That's and runner like, up rough for, for you. One of, I think one of my other ones was definitely, like, I think also most fun was like naming, but also worse. Mm -hmm. Because like, we just kept going back and forth on names. And then there was the day where we all looked like we were just batshit. 
Yeah. And we're just like roaming around the house. Like you saw people dancing in the kitchen, people like on the patio, like like Jared outside with a notebook staring at the waterfall like just because we were all trying <laughs> to like that. come yeah. up with like all these, like the perfect name and it was that was stressful but now that I'm thinking about it launch was pretty pretty great and bad all at the same time like I was up until I think 2 a.m yeah you and then slept sleep. for like a like a hot second and then I woke up again because like I didn't trust that the podcast the podcast had officially like been pushed through and it yeah. turned out it hadn't been so i was just sitting there like a crazy person just like up at 4 a.m trying to like get it done and then like our call time in the morning was like five yeah so i was like this is this is good <laughs> but like it's it's stuff like that that's really cool to see because we all came together as a team and that was just like a really exciting time for us because for three months like the seven of us were just like all working in like hush hush like don't tell anybody the name. Don't yeah. tell anybody this. Like, we can't share this yet. And then just being able to be super loud about it and excited and show you guys what we've been, like, doing and that it wasn't all in vain that we had disappeared off the map. Yeah. It was really cool. It's rewarding. Yeah. For sure. What do you think, Casey? So, I had no idea at first, but then your, your, what you said inspired me. Um, buying all the lights for this oh. set Ooh, <laughs> yes. was both the best and the worst. The worst first, because <laughs> I really felt like I had no idea what I was doing, um, and so it was a steep learning curve. Yeah. But then when I was able to actually do it, I was really proud of myself. Yeah. And you did an amazing job. Right. Thanks. I mean, look at this lighting. Like, the, <laughs> all the lighting, and then let's also talk about the electrical that goes into the lighting, because you learned all that, too. Learned, yeah. Like, learn, I learned, you know what I mean? Like, learn enough. enough to be like, we don't, enough like, to be dangerous. we don't, yeah. like, blow up every time we, like, turn something on. But <laughs> it was proof that, you like, things you think that you cannot do or you don't have the skills to do, you actually can do if you just mm -hmm. have to do it, which I had to do it. We had to have lights for our set. Um, and now I know things that I didn't know before about physical parts of the set. So, so that was nice. both yeah. very stressful but ultimately rewarding. Yeah. Right. For a long time, I wouldn't turn on the lights unless I asked Casey <laughs> or like Lisa. I'm like, is it this switch? <laughs> no, it's it's scary. Like, yeah, the lighting panel over there is frightening. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, Chase, what do you think? From a new blood experience, I wasn't here for the launch, so uh, let's see. One of the better experiences I think I've had here was uh, when. I think we got off work around like 6 p.m. and it was like me, Elsie, Ibrahim, and we were just at the table with Tom talking and we didn't leave till like 11 p.m. that night just ta asking Tom like any question we had and you know it's kind of hard for uh, I felt bad because Tom always says he'll answer any question but it's kind of hard for him to do that when he's in his own house. So, <laughs> uh, but that was one of the more memorable experiences. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> like we caged him. And uh, <laughs> You know, last Friday we had our team party. Yes, and that was also a really good one. We're all just sitting around like the hot tub, just talking. So we had a little hot tub theory, which was like really cool. <laughs> New show idea. We gotta have New a show, show theory. like a deep thoughts with impact. Theory. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's See? times when we're all just right. sitting around and we'll go deep into subjects and it's we're just kind of spitballing and yeah. uh, brainstorming <laughs> ideas. Yeah. So those are some of the better experiences, ones that aren't necessarily planned, but kind of just grow organically. Yeah. And I can't say I have any like bad experiences here. So I can thank you guys for facilitating with that. Oh, wow. But there's nothing oh, that has been like, like this has been terrible, I need to leave. It's all been like, you know, grind and push through it. So thank Goggins for that one. Cool. Wow. Awesome. We'll also thank the community for and the being community. so amazing. Yeah. Um, I just want to give a quick shout out to the Impact Theory League. So. I know I'm not always posting in there, but I do go in and read the posts in the He's comments. A lurker. I lurk a little. <laughs> as you know, I'm not heavy into social media. Um, ironic, being a marketer. <laughs> but um, you guys are super inspiring to me. So I read those comments, I read those posts, and I see what people are doing and taking some of the ideas that they've learned from our guests or from Tom on the show and then executing on them or deciding they're gonna go out on a new venture or change something about their lives yeah. and then going and doing it. Like it's so. so inspiring. There was someone the other day that was wearing the, the shirt that Chase is wearing, the TTFUBC, and they had climbed a big mountain in Santa Barbara, had gone on a big hike, and they said that they pushed through it and they weren't enjoying it, but they pushed through it for Goggins. And then <laughs> at the very top, they were like, okay, and then they felt good about it and it kind of changed the way they were thinking. And, 
It's just, it's super inspiring. Love yeah. that stuff. So keep it up, guys. So shout out, guys. Thanks. Yeah. All right, we have some, uh, we have a lot of questions coming in, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. So let's get to some of them. Like um, someone slacked on checking <laughs> Slack. <laughs> uh, here's a question from Shayna. Um, she says, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, what is your what does your morning look like? My morning? <laughs> yeah. Anybody's morning. <laughs> what does my morning look like? So right now I don't really have a morning routine. I pretty much like wake up and then just start getting ready and come here. Okay. Cool. <laughs> That's it. I nice. yeah. I like either listen to a podcast or an audiobook on the way. What does your evening Mostly look like? I think music. that's more. What does your weekend look like? <laughs> <laughs> that's more interesting to ask Cindy. She has a very, so, she's very social. So my weekends, they vary. They all depend on like what's going on. So for me, a lot of times into my week, I try to bake in something that's like culture centered so like an art museum or just like checking out a new neighborhood walking around that sort of thing and then um because it's summertime there are a lot of day parties Mm -hmm. so i'll just like go to those and like meet people i'll go to like happy hours or like um like these kind of like happy hour learnings kind of hybrid things um at like general assembly or with ivy um yeah kind of varies nice yeah just always doing stuff. Anyone else want to share morning routine? morning routine? I don't think I have a consistent enough routine at this point. What do I you would do like most one. Days? Yeah, your, I would I, like what's one. What's your too. ideal morning look like? Like <laughs> ideally, I would go to yoga at seven a.m., <laughs> which I yeah. do sometimes. Yeah, but um, is that when you do it, you feel yes, great afterwards? Yeah, the rest of the day, that I'm better, rush. more productive. Nice. I feel you. So. Maybe now that I've said that, I'm going to have to go to yoga more. (laughs) (laughs) Now you're you're on camera saying it. Chase, what does your morning look like? My morning is pretty simple. It's wake up, sit on the floor or five for like an hour and a half, then get here. But (laughs) my ideal morning, that's why I laughed because Casey said she wanted to go to yoga at 7 a.m. Is like my ideal morning routine was like wake up at 4.30, go to the gym, shower at the gym, come to work. And I did that for like a week and I was just... Yeah, yeah, you were like sleeping on the couch. Yeah. I was like, what's wrong with Chase? Chase was like, I was tired. <laughs> Where he was just pounding monsters. Yeah. Pounding <laughs> monsters like, at Red Bull, yeah. Yeah. That was concerning. You like were drinking too many. I'm going to hide them from you. <laughs> I swear um, I like my kidneys. <laughs> my morning my morning varies just depending on what's going on in my life, but ideal morning is go out, get up early, surf um, when it's dawn. If there are waves and then drive into work, also a long commute. So try to listen to podcasts, audio books on the way in. Mm-hmm. Um, if I don't do that, I'm usually in the gym in the morning. And then ideally after the gym, meditate, write, and then go into work. So mm-hmm. that's what I try yeah. to do. Yep. Trying to, trying to live the life. Trying, yep. trying. Cool. All right. Let's do another question from Facebook Live. What is a day in the life like at the Impact Theory office? This is from Kelly Foss. Hey, Kelly. I think everyone's day is going to be different. Right. I'm like, what? Um, I'll what start. Day so day, day in the life for me is <clears throat> um, come in three days a week. We have Facebook Live. So those are, I'm usually, you know, just aware that that's going on, making sure that things are set up, um, thinking about like planning for the day. What are the most important things that we need to get done on the marketing front? Um, working with Cindy um, on social and community, checking in with her. We usually try to do two times a week, like a check-in on the marketing yeah. team. So Cindy and all of our marketing interns, Chase, Elsie, Will, Molly, when she's here. Um, yeah, I'm just planning for the day. And then I don't think there's any day that looks the same. None of my days are the same. Yeah. Because some days we have shoot days and some days yeah. it's, it's just whatever big project we're trying to work on, whatever um, thing we're trying to push forward, it's, it's focusing on that. And then also making sure that all of the regular content goes out, that it's scheduled, yeah. that it has copy, that it has assets. Yes. That's a huge operation. Working with designers, remotely, <clears throat> yep. doing all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'll go so, since I started talking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so like my, my days also vary. Um... I definitely, every morning before I come in, I like kind of do a read of social. 
So like I'll check Tom's accounts, Impact Theory's accounts, the Impact Theory League, whether I post in it or not. I'll like check and see kind of what people are talking about. Lately, I've been taking a little bit of a, a backseat on the Impact Theory League, like a little strategically to see what people are talking about to start like strategizing ways that we can like deepen engagement with the things that you guys are interested in. So that's kind of something else that I'm working on today. Today I'll be making calls to different venues, trying to like book our next impact hour um, and make sure that they will allow us with all of the mass people to come in. Which you're, if you're in the LA area, you should come to come to impact hour. Yes. Come we'll to impact hour. It'll be July 19th location to be determined <coughs> depending on how my calls go today. Yes. Um, yeah, so every day is kind of different. Um, and as you guys, most of you know, I use like Google Keep to kind of like visually sort through my life. So I have currently a tab that's just like important impact theory things that like need to get done today. And that's like in red and then in all caps. And so those are the kind of things that I'm focusing on for today. I don't even know you use Google Keep. Really? I don't yeah. even know what Google Keep is. It's like so the it's like best cookies, right? Yeah, like, nope. it's like little po it's literally like visual post-it notes and I'm like obsessed <laughs> with post-it notes. So they've just created something that like just brings me a lot of joy because I don't have to like redo the post-it note cuz I used yeah. to be the person who would like have post-it notes like up everywhere. Uh, or like when I would actually use my planner regularly, I would have post-it notes laid on top of the like agenda instead of like actually using it interesting it's yeah it's like a whole thing like check boxes and lists and like all that so i use google keep i do that and so now i have things that like color coded for what they are like so everything in yellow is again like things that are more so like on the personal like just for the love of me kind of thing so those are the different restaurants i want to check out the different art museums like next week i'm going to the california african american museum because they have a new exhibit opening and they usually do like an after hours party so like i go to it yeah. um and yeah so it's like things like that are all on there and cool. then like impact theory stuff is in like gray and then um super urgent and important is in red <laughs> so yeah i feel like your uh, days are super interesting and also very varied um, mm -hmm. Because I feel like I'm always of two minds. There's like the we have shows coming up stuff. Mm -hmm. And when I had, I used to be dedicated, always would have a written notebook that was yeah. my planner mm -hmm. until Jared influenced me. Oh, we're using Asana? I'm still using Asana. She's on what? Asana. <laughs> I've converted another verse into Asana. If you only tried it, only for it work out. tasks. <laughs> yep. I still have my personal planner yep. to write that things down. That but is totally fair. What I used to do is put a list, split the page in half, and everything on the left was show-related tasks. Somehow I have to like Whoa. compartmentalize it. So mm -hmm. the show stuff, and then there's like everything else that I'm working on that's for impact for theory. the department. That's crazy. <clears throat> How do you bring it down? Like you're two people. Yes, <laughs> wow. it feels like two totally different departments. Well, I guess it is. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I so like my day. Yeah, maybe you should. Definitely depends on like if we have it shoots coming up. How many we have because those are the tasks I like to get done first, yeah. which is just a mm -hmm. lot of like coordinating with um, guests and their teams and doing gift basket stuff and you know just various things related to the show. Um, and then what else? I don't know. And then then the other stuff. projects are often more long term. Yeah things that I'm, it's going to take me several weeks to work on versus like things I can cross off my list. Yeah. Um, oh, and then I wanted to bring up, this is not every day at Impact 3, but one thing I love that we do is our team lunch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. once a week. Team lunch. Team lunch. I don't know if you guys have talked about that before. No. Not, not in depth. Not really. But like it's like it. a dedicated lunch with the whole team where we take like two hours sometimes and to it's, like yeah. it's sacred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In our company. It's like yeah. part of the culture. Team lunch is sacred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and we just talk about that's where some of the deep thoughts come into play. Because mm -hmm. we get on some nice tangents it's at yeah. our deep team thoughts lunches. And it's storytelling by Christopher McDonald. That's right. It's <clears> storytelling <throat> Dr. It's also like movies Finesse. that Cindy's never seen. There yep. are a lot of those. <laughs> True. Um, what else? 
Like, he just named all... You missed it. He named, like, all the Bond movies in order. Mm-hmm. Like, made a couple... We like, learned movies. that. And we learned one of them is a remake of one, an old one. Mm-hmm. And so it doesn't even count because, like, Chase had the wrong list. It was, like, Chase. it was like a yeah. whole thing. <laughs> wrong intern. We no, 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 but it's, that like, it's crazy. Dr. Finesse used to be in a James Bond fan club. Oh, yeah. Like, get sent oh gifts. <laughs> yes. Gosh, that like, is so Dr. Finesse. Yeah. Right? So. That guy has so many facets to him. Yeah. <laughs> um, Tom and Lisa are in the feed. Tom and Lisa, hi. hi. From hey Tahiti, guys. they're there. <clears throat> yeah, they're hey trying guys. to watch, but the internet is very slow. <laughs> Chase is practicing his Greek. Yep. Yazoo. Yazoo. Um, <laughs> we hope you guys are enjoying your vacation already, your anniversary. Yeah. yeah. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. We'll we'll try to uh, to try to keep holding it down over here. Um, Chase, what does your day look like? My day, uh, let's see. First off, uh, data analytics is what I focus on in the beginning. So I go to Google Analytics, check the website, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, check all the analytics there, see if anything is like spiking, declining, and after that, I go through my tasks in Asana. I have a long list of stuff that I want to do, and Asana, as well Asana, as Asana. Asana. Asana, Asana. Asana yeah. I only sometimes use Asana. Yeah, I, I just want I, to say that for the record. I never used to use Asana either. Like I've been A and B testing like my strategies, and I've realized <laughs> that like Asana has been like the best method. Yeah, so far, like so. Asana is nice with like deadlines and things. Definitely. So I yeah. might like I toggle back and forth. I'm like, yeah. So after I check the analytics side of stuff, I usually get a couple of stuff thrown on top from uh, Jared. Like, what would it look like at eight percent growth for the next six months, kind of thing. So I dive into those. It's usually like five or six things a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then sometimes I get thrown on some Photoshop grind or it's helping like, set up production or helping set up food trays for the guests. Yeah. So, oh. Yes. Chase is the master of food tray. He's a master plate master of chef. food tray. Because he likes Beautiful. to cook, right? You like to cook. I like to cook, yeah. yeah. And I used to work in a production <clears throat> kitchen, which is like, ah. I used to be a pastry <laughs> chef for uh, there it my is. school. So. There it is. That makes sense. Because yeah. it's First like, he out. always has like very nice arrangements. And I'm like, <laughs> it's beautiful. Huh. Okay. He does data analytics, <laughs> designs t-shirts, yeah. and was a pastry chef, ladies, if you're out there. He's single. <laughs> He's single. <laughs> In fact, theory connection. A <laughs> uh, couple quick shout outs. Johan from Paris. What's up, Johan? Hey, Johan. We have Hannah from the UAE. What's up, Hannah? And Madeline from Toronto. What's hey up? Hey, hey, thanks for joining us. People hope you're enjoying, hope enjoying this uh, presentation oh. of team Facebook Q&A, Impact Team. Um, we're, we're about at the halfway mark, so I want to invite some other people up on the set and thank Casey and Chase for joining us. Yep. Everyone thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Casey and Chase. All right. Cool. It was fun having you on. I'm kind of thanks, missing guys. you already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Right. pre sad. Who's come up on next? next? Uh, we have a couple we more Amanda. folks coming. Mm-hmm. Come join the set. Man is coming. Yep. Will is coming. We'll give them a minute. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of people in the feed. Yay! A lot of love from the fans. Should Thank we, you guys. We, we really appreciate it. No shame plug. Uh, Jessica says Shop. she wants to go to a hot tub theory. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> come on Ready in, guys. guys. Yeah, come yeah. on in. Shop Impact Theory. Oh yeah, available. Chase is pushing the store. The store. We did the refresh. We'll have a men's shoot soon. We have women's shirts up there. Lovely dudes modeling a little bit. Oh yeah, I also set up photo shoots, guys, and do merch. (laughs) Merch Come on in. Come on in. Two other members of the Impact Theory team, and this isn't everyone, of course, but we're getting a few people at a time. So, introduce yourself. Um, it was so much better back over there. It's on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Will, and I'm a marketing intern here. Do I look at this camera? Yes. Oh, this camera. <laughs> yeah. um, I do, I wear a bunch of hats over here. I do um, influencer marketing. I also help manage the community on Instagram, on the Impact Theory page. So all those comments are from me. Hello. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and um, I also work on the store, making... Sure, everything runs smoothly, answering any customer support, and yeah. You do a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Will Will is uh, was our first intern. He's like OG. Patient yeah. zero. Patient yeah, zero. patient zero. <laughs> Which I feel like we should tell the story of yes. how Will started. Uh, back at Inside story. Quest, 
I'll tell it because I feel like he's only going to run through it quickly. Yeah, you tell it. <laughs> Back at Inside Quest, um, Will would come to our tapings in the studio and he would also just kind of hang out after the tapings. And I mean hang out like you wouldn't know that he's there, but then you turn around and he'd just be kind of around. Like, <laughs> oh, hey, hey, Will, how's it going? And um, he was really sweet and really nice and supportive and we just kind of wanted to be around what mm -hmm. we were doing. And so eventually we just handed him a broom and we're like, all right, well, if you're going to be here. It's actually a chair. Time, yeah. Let's be clear. I'm using, I'm using that as a metaphor. But if you're going to be here, we're going to put you to work. Um, we were doing a Facebook Live and we were scrambling and we needed help. And it was like, hey, can you go get some chairs to, so that people can sit in the audience? And he started doing that. And then he started helping out with a few other things and yep. showing up more and more. And pretty soon it was like, do you actually want to work here intern and he said yes and so we kind of formalized it and at first you started out kind of on the production side yeah. but I um, stole Ooh. you away very quickly on the marketing side as, I as do. we do yeah. <laughs> as we do uh. and you've been a, uh, a big help to us ever since so thank you awesome it's awesome to be here cool yeah. And it's amazing. I didn't. I didn't know that. <laughs> Learn something new every day. I didn't know that Hi everyone. Either. I'm Amanda. I'm the assistant here at Impact Theory. Um, day to day, I'm just doing anything to help anybody. Um, my main priority is managing Tom's calendar and getting things booked for him. Which is not. It's easy. not easy. Okay. So not easy. And we thank you so much for yes. coming on board to yeah. do that because <laughs> his calendar, when he was managing it, was a nightmare. Yes. And he'll attest, so he yeah. this is not us uh, saying anything bad. Not throwing him under the bus. <laughs> yeah, but um, I'm just here to do anything to help on, you know, show days, any last minute things to get done, anything, any of the team or departments need. I'm always, um, yeah, just willing to help, and I'm just kind of here to be that hand for, for everything. Um, yeah. And Amanda does so much outside of her job description as well. And let's just say you planned an amazing party yes, and executed you did. an amazing party last week yes. for the team. It was so thoughtful and so creative, and it was outstanding. We had a great so time. Good. So thank you. I loved you. watching all of you have a good time. <laughs> like, I hope you also had fun too. I did. <laughs> yes, I did. Good. I saw some hanging out with the Wookiee monster going <laughs> crazy does. at the pool. Yeah, Wookiee loves the pool. Um, we're getting a request to turn up the mics. I don't think we can turn them up any louder, so, so just talk louder. We can talk louder, and we can have Ibrahim turn it up a little bit. Okay. Downstairs. Yeah, but I think it's probably for you panelists. Okay. All right, we'll be louder. louder. We're sorry, Shout! Guys. Let's do <laughs> a question from Tom and Lisa. Okay. Next up, what is your appreciation language? According to Vanessa Van Edwards, there are five yeah. quality time, <laughs> words of affirmation, Lovely. physical touch, acts of service, and gifts, mm. which is yours. Okay. okay. So, do you know yours, Cindy? I do know mine. So my first encounter with it was as like love languages. Me too. So, yeah. Um, I've never put it in a business context. Yeah, me neither. So I don't know what so it is like, for business. For right. Me. But. but for my love language, I guess appreciation language, um, it would be quality time ranked at the top in like an obscene number. <laughs> and then uh, words of affirmation, acts of service, gifts, and then physical touch is like all the way to the uh, That's the rank. Okay. Words yeah. of affirmation. It's good to know. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So. Those are those are mine. My top two: quality time and words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. Got it. Will, what are yours? Let me make sure I understand it correctly. So, affirmation, um, appreciation, language is how you want to be like acknowledged, or we should probably run through. And yeah. I'm not an expert, but I think we can <laughs> give some definitions. Words of affirmation is um, telling someone else that they're doing a good job. Telling yeah. someone else, "Hey, you did a really good job on that," or "Hey, you look oh, really nice yeah. today." It's sort of providing compliments mm -hmm. for someone um, and telling them when they're And like, they thank you, well. I really appreciated yeah. that. Or, appreciation. Yeah. Yeah, I think if explained that way, then that's going to be my number one because whenever I got I get an appreciation, get an affirmation, is that what it's called? Yeah. yeah. Whenever I get an affirmation that I'm doing something well, even if it's just being organized or doing well on the store launch, it really fires me up to like do even better. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. That's my number one. 
All right. It's good to know. Amanda, what about you? Uh, I think uh, gifts are definitely last. Okay. <laughs> um, I think quality time and affirmation are kind of at a tie. Um, I think, you know, just being in presence and like having that quality time yeah. with people really mm -hmm. like, I don't know, warms my heart kind of and just affirmation as well, like feels good. Um, but I think like being, having that quality time, I don't know, that's probably my number one. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So if you're just joining us, I want to remind everyone we're on Facebook Live. We're taking over Tom's page because he and Lisa are in Tahiti celebrating their anniversary time. and taking a well-deserved break. Yes. Um, we are here taking over and we're sharing with you a little bit about the team, giving you a behind the scenes look. So ask questions that you have for anyone here on the Impact Theory team. Mm -hmm. And I will talk about my appreciation language. I don't know what it is in a business setting. I was just oh. talking about this with Tom the Did other day. Did you take the quiz? Yeah. Um, no, okay. no. So I should do that. Yeah, I think I'm everyone sure should do that. Cause I'm doing it from the quiz that I took like oh, okay. a while ago. Yeah. So what I think it is, um, acts of kindness or charity. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm thinking about my relationship with my wife. What I get most excited about and what, when I feel loved is when she does little things for me um, and she, like little thoughtful things mm. like, oh, um, you know, cooks a nice dinner or something that I like or, um, oh, I got you this beer that's really special <laughs> that I know you really like to yeah. drink and it's just here for you when you come home at the end of the week. Like those, those things mean a lot to me. So... Okay. Acts of kindness. I don't know how that translates to a business setting. So, so that's like, um, hmm. how would it? I mean, I think it would kind of center around the same things. Like if someone saw that, like, let's say you were like carrying a whole bunch of boxes or something and like they just went and like grabbed one. From yeah. You. Like, I think, yeah, I think it could one. work. Yeah. Or if I have a bunch of deadlines and yeah, someone's and like, like, hey, I'm just going to take care of this for you. I'll take it off your plate. Right. It's like, what do you need help with? Yeah. And then just like do it. Yeah, all right. But I should probably take the quiz. Yeah, everyone should take the quiz. Because we're all going to do it. And we're talking right. about Vanessa Van Edwards' yeah. book, Captivate. Captivate, you know, she's which is be now on. a book, like an Impact Theory official book. One yeah. of the ones we have to like read. Right, as a team. And then we're going to go through the exercises and figure out each other's yes. matrix. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to be fun. Like, yeah. I'm excited. Me too. Because it'll, it it'll just give us a lot more insights to like work with each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With like definitive answers <laughs> all right let's do a question from the audience all right here's a question i think for um probably mostly for cindy and, and myself it's from joshua martell can you tell us what it was like when tom came to you guys and told you inside quest was finished was the idea of impact theory addressed in the same line i'll start yeah. off so yes um the experience was um, all right, we're changing direction. Uh, we're starting, we're going to spin off our own studio and um, we're going to start as soon as we can and I want you to come with me. And that, that was really the, the question that was posed to me. And I'll just say that the, the exp it was like one of the times when it really came, became clear to me that the types of things that Tom talks about are not just they're not just talking points yeah. for him, that he actually lives them. Um, you know, in any period of transition, when you're going from one company to the next, or there's a big life change, there's usually a lot of stress and anxiety that comes mm -hmm. with it. And he did not miss a beat. He was yeah. like, here's what we're doing, we're ready to go. Like, when's the soonest we can get started? And right. I was just blown away by that. I was really blown away. So it was super impressive and a great lesson to me in, um, Staying focused on your goals, not getting, uh, not being daunted by uh, changes in life, letting things come at you and just adjusting and reacting. Yeah. So. Yeah. What was it like for you? So for for me, it was like so all those things you said for sure, but then there was also like that little bittersweet aspect because like I had worked at Quest from the team I guess the longest mm -hmm. and in kind of like this middle role where I worked on things with like Quest Nutrition and then also Inside Quest. But Inside Quest was mostly like my big project that I kind of like took over mm -hmm. and just kept pushing forward relentlessly because I was like, you will listen to me, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Um, and so like there was a lot of sadness because like I knew that I'd be like 
unsure of the futures of people that I like was friends with and like talked to yeah. every day and it was it was like just kind of that stuff like the I guess personal aspects of it but in terms of um when Tom came to us and like told us okay like this is what we're doing like all right cool I would love you guys to come with I was just like okay like <laughs> there wasn't really I feel like there wasn't ever like a, a moment where I was like oh like maybe I should think about like other things for me I was just like hmm, all right, so, like, what happens now? And then once there was, like, a, a plan in place, I was like, all right, cool, that's it. Yeah. There was never really, like, confusion or apprehension about it. Yeah. It was, yeah. Nice. Did you guys, like, foresee it to be... So, at Inside Quest, it was just uh, one episode a week and a couple of power-ups here and there. Did you guys <sighs> foresee it to be something bigger than just that mm -hmm. like a I mean, few weeks like a few months before the actual thing or like even like when you first started so there was for me at least there was this feeling that like inside quest was starting to take on this its own life and it was getting bigger and bigger and for and a lot of times it was me at, like demanding time of tom that like almost didn't exist so it I like knew that there was going to be more stuff that would center and spin off and like there were so many other projects we wanted to work on like from the beginning even but we just didn't have the bandwidth and like Tom's time attention and all those things um and so doing impact theory just made sense to me yeah. because it just scaled out what it was that I was already tinkering with and like small aspects here and there or trying to infuse here and there and now they have like a larger and clearer vision and like execution so that's been like the coolest thing yeah that it's like its own standalone definitely i would agree with that 100 percent. yeah all right here's a question for me from rishi uh suri van vanchi i'm sure i butchered that <laughs> name i'm sorry um he says, hey, Agent Smith, how do you change the people? Oh, I should, sh I didn't even, yes. I didn't even share yes. this. Uh, Tom gave me this right before he left. Uh, it's an Agent Smith figurine. And we're going to make him blonde. Figurine. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because he's kind of blonde on the packaging, but, but his, hair, super, his hair is dark. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so this is awesome. I'm super excited about this. So, so, he has an official pop that will go right next to Got my official pop. Yep. Yeah. yeah. On the shelf. Uh, the question from Rishi, how do you change the people you are around? I mean, if most people in your life are negative, how do you cut them all out and remake your surrounding from scratch? Um, I'm not going to pretend I'm an expert in this area. <laughs> I'll just say from life experience, I don't think I've ever actively um, said I need to change the people I've been around or like drop the negative people. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe on, on certain individual um, occasions with certain people. But really, it's like I think... W for me, I've gravitated toward people that I just instinctively know are the people I need to be around. So right. I, I would say don't focus on um, don't focus on the negative people around you, but start looking for the positive people, the mm -hmm. people that you just click with and have a similar worldview and spend more time with them. And then I think over time, the other folks will just kind of fade away from your life. And there may be cases when you actually have to say this friendship or relationship has to end. Um, yeah. But. And I, I mean, I agree with that. I think that's very true. Um, just in my own personal experiences, uh, you do find yourself gravitating towards the people that um, fill you a little bit more. And so, and yeah, like, and in terms of like cutting people out, I'm not good at that. Yeah, it's <laughs> I'm hard. Like really, it's I'm conflict. really not good at cutting people off like fully mm -hmm. um, because there's always, be I guess because I'm like so optimistic and so kind hearted and I just see, I like see the best in everyone, even the people who are like the worst to me. I still know how to keep them at a distance and spend less time with them. Um, all the while moving towards people who are, you know, filling everything with light and yeah. just being more positive influences and people who are, even if they're not that like lighthearted person, like they know that they're, you know, they're growing, they're, you know, always wanting to learn and try new things or, and even if they don't want to try new things, like sometimes, you know, compromise and say like, Hey, let's do this baby step towards it. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, so that's kind of like how I, I deal with that. Nice. And I would say if you're having trouble finding the people to be around, a good place to start would be the Impact Theory League. Me too. Yeah. Um, I think I you'll find a lot of... I can Jared to help plug my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm only saying it not, to, not as a shameless plug, but I think it would actually be an effective first step to yeah. find like-minded people. Maybe they aren't in your immediate vicinity, but maybe some of them are in your region. I mean, right. there's like 1,500 people on the Impact Theory League. Yeah, it's like 1,600. 1,600. But also, I mean, don't discredit like digital friendships because there are some people that I met through just digital platforms that have actually become like really great friends to me. Like we've met up in real life. Like, you know, yeah, I've seen enough. them on a weekend or like for a week long, whatever you have it. And we only see each other a few times a year, but at the same time, we're so like-minded and we talk all the time. Yeah. Like there's a girl that I met in, the, uh, in New York for a General Assembly digital marketing class. And we still talk to this day. It was like two years ago at this point, three years ago maybe. And like, that's mostly digital. That's when I was in Atlanta, I like met up with her because she'd moved to Atlanta from Austin. It was like a whole thing. Like we've just been moving around the country. Yeah. But like, yeah. So right. don't discount just, digital friendships. Yeah. Choose, you know, choose to keep people. That's my whole thing. All right. I'm going to do another question from Tom and Lisa. All right. What guest that we've had on Impact Theory has meant the most to you and why? That's a good Ooh. one. Ooh. What's Jared? I feel like answer? Will has an immediate answer to this. Uh, I don't because it's like picking your best friend or picking your favorite player. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I'm not usually a favorite person. Me I don't neither. have a, I don't have a favorite type of music. I listen to like old music and the newest like EDM music. It mixed together. But yep. in terms of guest, what's um, the person that stood out to me the most was. Um, Evan Pushak, the nerd writer. I knew that was gonna be so, all right. So like that is one of Jared's like favorite it's like secret, episodes. It's like his my secret, secret crush. Like his secret like sleeper episode. Yeah. So it's just ironic because I was like, if Jared goes first, I know what his answer is gonna be. But it was really great. But too. but please but talk, yes. talk about why Evan um, impacted you. Because he's a really um, philosophical person and he thinks really deeply about. Um, everything in life. Um, I was doing the Instagram for our Instagram page and I have to find quotes from guests and one of the quotes I picked out from Evan Pushak was um, he said something along the lines of once you find your worldview the world becomes a little less scary mm -hmm. and your action becomes a little more um, intentional and that just gave me like the chills again because yeah. once you know like I don't even know my worldview yet but um, to like actually take time to find that and everything just seems a, a lot more clear for me. Yeah, I'm gonna second Evan, the nerd mm -hmm. writer, Pushak, and also say that um, the Gary Vaynerchuk episode really hit me hard. And I I'm a person exactly. who can, whoa, see? It, it was like deep. During the taping, I like cried. Yeah. I was like, oh mm -hmm. God. It was emotional. And we all consume his content uh, pretty religiously. But seeing that side of him and talking about worldview, he has a very, very clear worldview. Mm. And it's, it's one that I identify with pretty strongly. Um, just his ideas around empathy and kindness and caring and mm. doing what makes you feel alive. It's like, and not tearing other people down. Like those are things that I think are like about it. right on. Yeah, so those would, those would be my two. What about you, Amanda? Oh gosh, all of them I, I love. Um, two... One, Michael Strahan, I really loved just his, his happiness and what, something that sticks with me is like he would say when he would walk in um, for his like productions in the morning, he would say hi to everybody, just like mm -hmm. acknowledge mm -hmm. like, hi, how are you? You're here today, you mm -hmm. know, from everybody to... Give him a to, hug, I think. Yeah, yeah I think, and give thing. him a hug. And so I, his interview, something about that just stuck with me because that's just in my personality to like care and just happiness and joy and... Um, knowing that like behind the scenes, the team here just like acknowledging everybody um, and taking that time uh, is important. Um, and then with Mel Robbins, um, she talked about the five second rule. Um, haven't tried that so much, but she, a point that sticks with me from her interview was she talked about like the, the, 
microsecond that your mind can make a decision. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. in that microsecond of waiting to either ask a question or speak up or, you know, act upon something could literally change your life. And so that sticks with me, just my personality. I'm, I'm very introverted and sometimes I'm shy and, and tend to wait or maybe I want to say something and I don't or, you know, thinking about decisions of things and pros and cons or indecisiveness and things like that. Um, that really sticks with me and that's something I, I think about all the time, like in moments of decisions or speaking up or talking, like if you just do it and don't, you know, don't let that microsecond pass by, what, what could be the outcome? Yeah. So mm, that's great. Yeah. All right. So, so nice. well, you all just heard that I cried during, during yeah. the Chuck interview. So that one definitely impacted me a lot as well as the Jessica and Matthews one. Um, just because like, there were so many like different parallels almost like with her upbringing and you know where she came from and the different ideas and like the touch points of reference so there's a lot of like i guess brain synergy there mm -hmm. um and then just this idea that she's tackling such a large industry and she's willing to do it as kind of like the amateur underdog and so that's a story that always re resonates with me because i'm like big into the underdog stories yeah um and then Gary's like ideas on empathy um, as part of business culture is something that sticks with me so hard because I'm that person. So I majored in English and creative writing, and it was yeah, <laughs> it was all about the fact that I really didn't like what my views of business were at the time, or the views that like as I grew up because I like grew up mostly in the '90s and like the early 2000s, and I went to college in 2008 or whatever when the recession hit and mm -hmm. like everyone was fucked yeah. um and so i really just didn't like the the cutthroat ideals of business and seeing someone who so firmly believes that you can also have kindness in business and it shouldn't have to be like you like in order for me to advance i need to make sure that i step on every single person around me versus hey let's support each other and make this a team thing because i'm mm -hmm. a very team oriented person um, I like to rally the troops, if you will. And so that really stuck with me. And then his, like, just ideals on being an older sibling. So I really resonated with that mm. just because, like, the way he talked about his brother and, like, the way that he talks about his family and all those kind of, um, I guess, immigrant mentalities, too. Mm. That resonated with me. And then we're kind of from the same area. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, Jersey. <laughs> Jersey. Nice. Jersey strong. Those are great answers. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, guests that impacted you, here's a question from Daniel Breeze. He wants to know who would be someone that each of you would love to be interviewed by Tom and why? Um, someone that has not been on the show yet. So, mm. what's your personal wish list? I have a long one, I think. So, yeah. I'll get going. You start. Um, Kendrick Lamar. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Jared's first yeah. answer, Kendrick. Number two, Beyonce. That's also on my list. That's also um, on my list. Number three, Kelly Slater. World professional surfer. World champion mm, ah, surfer. Okay. Oh. All right. Um, <laughs> like, 11-time world champion surfer, arguably the most dominant athlete of all time. I'm throwing that out there. Mm. Of all time of any sport. He's still Serena like 44 Williams, and he's still com still competing. Ooh, oh. Serena Williams, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Tanahasi Coates, I think would be amazing. Oh, that would be amazing. Um, and then a, probably just a bunch of different writers that I'd like to see on the show. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. So I also have Beyonce on my list, yep. and Kendrick is on there as well. Chance the Rapper. Oh, Chance would be there. great. <laughs> um, Lupe Fiasco is on there for me as well. Nice. Uh, let's see. Who else? You said Tony um, That's that's decent for now. I'll yeah. only think about the others. Well, <laughs> um, I don't have one like on top of my what? head. What? Right no, Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky. Um, no. oh. He's like. Ah. I was, I was He's thinking like, you like go him. the philosopher route. The philo but most of them are. Are not done. here with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like roomy, but you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Zizek. I would pick, I don't know, I'm just like frozen right now. Um, All right. 
Amanda? I don't have a list either. I know. I'm thinking yeah. who, in who, the sports world, maybe Kobe Bryant. Okay. So. Mm. Oh, um, if it's like uh, fictional, oh, I want Tom fiction. to interview Batman. Because uh, let's see, like, talk about the darkness, talk about <laughs> how you grew up, <laughs> like talk about, like, that. how is he, like, a billionaire, but he still wants to help people. Like, how does that come out yeah. of Batman? I think Tom would, like, crush that episode. He would, if he can get Batman to talk. I feel like he's not very talkative. <laughs> I mean, he does talk, he has a very deep... He has, like, a bit. Yeah, he has a voice modulator. You have to fix the audio a bit, too. Like, yeah. He's, like, a drop in. <laughs> Cool. Um, let's do one more question from the audience since oh, let's add Solange here. on that, that Ooh, list. Solange. Okay. Beyonce and Solange yeah. together. No, separately. Okay. Okay. Separately. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see here. What is your passion and keeps your fire going? Also, what gets your ass up in the morning? Whoa. Big deep question. <laughs> I figured you guys What's are warmed up now. Yeah. <laughs> like, right, warmed up and like now, okay, so what is my passion? So I feel like I'm kind of living most of my passion daily just because my passions really do center around bringing people together and having people see the, the most good in the world, if you will. Um, it's still part of my like kind of like sparkly, hippie personality. Um, and... Yeah, so I feel like I'm I'm doing that. And then what's the second part? What gets me out of bed in the yeah. morning? Um, it could be the same question, just phrased a little bit differently. Yeah, I mean, I think that like it's this idea of building communities, building you know, like voice championing championing for voices that are less heard, um, underdog stories, um, and then my family. That would just be an nice. additional thing. It's like, do it to make it proud as well. That's awesome. Will? Hmm. I've always had a um, more like altruistic like passion to help people that are less privileged than me because growing up, my parents was less privileged and I'm in like a really fortunate position. And so like I get constantly reminded of, look, there's like a, maybe like two, half of the world is more, it's like, it's uh, in like, a less fortunate position than you, so you need to make the most of your opportunities. But having said that, I put that uh, passion to aside a little bit to work on more on myself more because I need to level up. I need to gain more skills in order to effectively help people. So now more of more like um, internal passion is to be the best marketer I can be. And um, it's the best place to be in, at Impact Theory because I get to wear so many different hats. I get to work on content marketing, which is the first thing I mm -hmm. dabbed into because we're a content company and we need to see how to best like give that message out. Then I went to Influencer to talk to more people and collaborate around the world. Then, yeah, just learn every kind of marketing there is and be the best like give the best message and give a emotion to the audience. And once I've, once, once I'm more comfortable with that, I have a long way to go, then I can open back to my more altruistic passion and start working on that. Nice, great answer. Amanda. Um, so, you know, people are just really my passion. So um, coming here every day and being able to, I don't know, just kind of like take care of everything around her. Everyone is kind of like how I feel, like just like the nurturer, like being able to come here and do the little things that need to get done to help this company like keep going and just succeed on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, just like fires me, like I love it. Um, so that's like my passion, like really people and just seeing, you know, like the ups and downs and goods and bads of everything that are always opportunity to to learn and, and pivot and continue going and so just being around that environment of you know like the motivation the positivity um just that's like my passion just like seeing people do good and and help others like truly i just i love that i live for that like to help other people just makes my day like i can put myself so last just to be able to do something for somebody else like that's what i just live for um 
and then getting up out of bed every day like what drives me is just a new like a new day to be better than the the last um new opportunities to learn and just like yeah I just feel like you we're not guaranteed like another second or minute on this planet and so like why not live like every moment um just doing something to better yourself your life somebody else so I think like getting up every day just excites me like it's a new day to do all those things learn help grow change the world that's a great answer <laughs> that's a great answer and I'm gonna say that um I'm just gonna second what you said yep. on the, se- on the last part <laughs> um for me what gets me out of the bed every day is is uh, growth and learning um I get excited about that what keeps me pushing forward and then um, just, I just want to be a good person. Like that's my life goal. I, I'm interested in micro actions that I think have larger implications. Yeah. So I, if I can just be a good person in really small moments throughout my life, hopefully that has a knock on effect with other people that are around me. And I think, you know, helping people is great and something that I've always tried to incorporate into whatever I'm doing. And so before it was, I, I thought that route was teaching and I was going down the path of becoming a teacher, but now here at Impact Theory, this is like the best way to reach a mass amount of people and help them through education. So it kind of brings in the teaching element as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm us. about. Okay. We're getting deep we on the team I know. Q&A. Deep up. <laughs> um, I think we'll wrap it up there. Thank you, everyone, for joining oh, wow. us. We're done. We're done. I know, it went by fast. That went by yeah. so fast. So if you guys enjoyed this... I'll look to this camera. If you guys enjoyed this and you want to see another one, um, we'll do another one next week. But let us know in the comments so we know whether or not we should, we should yeah. do this again. Um, and we can try to bring on some other people and ask some questions, get to some of the questions that you asked here that we did not get to. But uh, thank you for joining us. Yes. Thank Thanks you guys everyone. so much. Thank you. And, uh, much appreciated. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. It's a weekly show. Until next time, be, be legendary. legendary. <laughs>